Good evening. I'd like to call to order the June 11th Groton Town Council Committee of the Whole. All members are present with the exception of Councilor Obrey, who is um, attending her grandson's graduation, and Councilor Baumgartner is running late from work, so we are at seven councilors at this point. Calendar and communications. Councilor Parker. I attended the Board of Ed Town Council, City Council of RTM liaison meeting along with, you want me to Sure. With Council Franco and Council Atwater, um, attended Groton Bank Day and Juneteenth in New London. Councilor Franco. Um, <laughs> I attended that meeting <laughs> along with um, Economic Development Committee as well. Very insightful. Councillor Heaton. Um, I attended a task force with Councillor Opry uh, to discuss the Sealy School property. Thank you. Councillor Atwater. Uh, I attended the liaison committee meeting. I went to the Stonington nonprofit organization meeting last Thursday, and I attended the retirement board hearing that, or meeting that was here last Thursday also. Councillor Schmidt. No report. And Councillor Zapari. I uh, visited the uh, Groton, uh, the Knowing School uh, area over the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, the lawn was mowed. Uh, there were there was some gardening going on in the uh, gardening area, uh, but there were many uh, many of the uh, spots were not in use or appeared to be not in use. The place doesn't appear to be any different than it did a year ago. There is a large tent on the property with some ch tables and chairs set up in it. I'm not sure what that's for, but I presume it's, it's proper. Uh, uh, and uh, that's, that's all. I, I wanted to see what's happening with that property since uh, it has, uh, the, the prior uh, caretakers have been dismissed. Uh, doesn't seem any different than it did before as far as the overall appearance of the place is concerned. Um, the tent, I believe, is a staging area. There's a film being um, done at in Groton Long Point, and they're using the Noank Garden for um, staging purposes. So, they're running a film in the tent. They're running a film in Groton Long Point, and they're using the tent, the Noank School uh -huh. property, uh -huh. as a staging area. I see. Okay, uh, calendar and communications for myself. I attended our Don Groton Bank. Water taxi is up and running, and it's great. I highly recommend it. Mr. Burton. Um, yeah, the tent should only be there for a few more days. I put it in my weekly report. That it's a Lifetime Channel movie. Um, and I did let the officials down in knowing know about it. So they were aware. In terms of the knowing garden plots, there are eight renters right now renting 11 plots. That's, that's it so far. But it's been actively promoted on our website. That's what we have so far. Um, the only other thing is I wanted to notify everyone the Nautilus dock, the Navy finally accepted the Nautilus dock <laughs> after, I don't know, how long has that been, a year? <laughs> it took a while, but that's for the uh, floating water taxi dock that'll be attached to the Nautilus uh, dock pier over there. Um, that's $730,000 through a ship grant um, through the uh, Connecticut Port Authority. So the Navy has approved that and it's moving forward. The Navy had already been working on some environmental work in advance. So. That's great. Okay. Um, item number four, approval of minutes, 2019-402. Councilor Parker, please. I make a motion to approve um, May 28, 2019, and June 4th meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Moved by Parker and seconded by Franco. There is a typo on page three under item number three, second paragraph. Um, council that the membership of Millennium, millenn I don't even know, that's not the word. Um, I think they were trying to say Millennials at the golf course, is I'm assuming what they were going for. Do you see it? Mr. Burt, yes? Yes. Okay. And that's the only thing I saw. <laughs> Anyone else? Councilor Atwater. I just had a question on page seven. Um, my motion to strike Appendix A from the agreement was voted down and yet at the bottom of the box where it's all, it says approved. And I would think that should not be approved because the motion wasn't approved. It would fail eight to one, or seven to one and one abstention. 
Hmm, interesting, yeah. Yep, so that needs to be fixed as well. And then the other question I had was that uh, on page 11, it showed the increase in the mill rate for the uh, water district, or sewer district rather, going from 27 to 28. And when we were at the uh, liaison meeting last Wednesday, Kathy Chase said that she had gone to some board meeting and we weren't allowed to raise the mill rate, and I, I didn't know what she was talking about. Those so are two just, separate things. There's a sewer district fee and there's a sewer district um, tax. They're two totally, she's good confusing the two. Um, okay. This is, uh, I double checked with, triple checked with Cindy. This is appropriate, it was done correctly. Okay, fine, thank you, that's all. Anyone else with comments on the minutes? So we have two items that need to be corrected. Other than that, all those in favor of acceptance of the minutes 2019-402 say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously and we are at seven councilors. We are on to item, uh, new business, item 5A, 2019-409. Uh, there's no motion needed at this point. This is the item uh, that is the review of council responsibilities for the Groton Housing Authority. And we have um, a town attorney with us this evening to speak to us um, about this. So attorney Cody, correct? And if you could come up, please. Come back and get This is on page 12. Yes, sir. So this is an insert um, prior to page 12. It was mailed or was emailed out to everybody. Okay, all it says is issue, review of council responsibilities, potential executive session. Uh, the background is the review of council responsibilities towards the Groton Housing Authority. No motion is expected. This topic is intended for discussion purposes. So uh, Attorney Cody is here to talk to us about the Groton Housing Authority and the town council's role in regard to that body. Thank you for coming out this evening. I know you have to get over to planning as well this evening. You're welcome, thank you. Uh, my name is Rich Cody. I work with Eileen and uh, at Sussman Shapiro, and uh, Eileen asked me to uh, take a look at this uh, uh, this question. Um, a housing authority is, is a statutory creation, and, you, and it's not a perfect analogy, but you can think of it in terms of like a non-stock corporation with a board of directors. The intersection of the municipal authority through the council is to appoint the commissioners, which are essentially the board of directors. Directors, There's five of them. Uh, you appoint them every five years. Um, the tenant organization can be involved through an election of appointing the tenant uh, representative. Um, and if, if they don't elect uh, someone, then you, the, the duty falls to you. Um, the, that is essentially the extent of your, of the intersection is you appoint the commissioners and you reappoint them. Uh, there is a statute that says you can remove commissioners uh, based upon neglect or misconduct in office. Um, and the statute's clear that it, it applies only to the commissioners, only to the so-called directors. Once the directors are properly formed, once they act like a body like you do here, they they run the organization much the way a board of directors would run a non-stock corporation. So they make all the decisions with respect to hiring, firing employees, buying and selling property, entering into contracts, hiring for services. They have the exclusive authority for that. Um, and if you do, if there is grounds to remove a commissioner, uh, you would have to give them a hearing, which is something you probably expect. Councilor Schmidt. I just had a question. What is our responsibility in the appointment of a uh, tenant commissioner? No. Well, the, the tenant commissioner, um, I understand there's been some confusion over there and they've just established an organization. So assuming that the statutes are followed correctly and the by, their own bylaws don't really help because I think the bylaws are antiquated, at least the ones I've seen. Um, if if the if there's a vacancy that occurs in that 
that office. It is um, notice is given to the tenant organization, which can then petition for an election. And uh, they have to get enough signatures, I think it's 10%. And if that happens, then there's a, a, an election, so to speak, of all the tenants who elect the person. If they don't get the, enough, petition, enough people on the petition, then after, I think, 90 days of your giving notice of the, um, of the vacancy, then you, you have the power to appoint. Thank you. This is, a, this is a, the, the housing authority is a division of the town. It's in the town, and yet it's totally autonomous. Yes. Uh, it seems like, and, th and they're not elected by the public, but they're administering public property. Um, there seems to be something, something wrong with that system. Uh, yeah, that I, they would be that aut autonomous. I, I'm not familiar with the legislative history, the housing authorities are very old, um, and the statute's very old, and it, it, it creates a housing authority in every, in every town, in every municipality, and, uh, but it comes into existence by way of a resolution of the, the uh, here would be the council. Um, and then once it's created, the legislature said it acts autonomously. So either the legislature made a must have made some kind of a decision when, it's, when it established the statutes that it, a, it didn't want the operation to become too political. That's the only thing I can surmise. Uh, the, the other thing that they're administering town-owned property, mm -hmm. the Grasso Gardens and uh, what's the other one, the tower? Pequot right? Village. Pequot Village uh, uh, are owned by the, the town. Does the town have any liability for those properties that are being administered by an autonomous board? Uh, I, I mean, I, I doubt that there's, there would be any liability because you're not in control. Um, if there was, um, you know, if somebody slipped and fell, I'm sure their policies would, would carry it, and you'd have your ordinary governmental immunities. You need to have what? You, you would have your ordinary governmental immunities as well. Mr. Burt wanted to jump in, please. Um, if you look at those properties in the system, they're under the name of the Housing Authority. I believe they were deeded to them. So I think there's a deed from us to them. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they usually own their own properties. Yeah. Councilor uh, Heed? Uh, two questions. Uh, so they go through the process, they petition to have a vote. Who runs the vote? like that process? The authority. The authority would, would the do authority. the authority. And I did notice that in the bylaws I saw of the authority, there's no, no provision for the manner in which the election should be held. Presumably, they'll do it with advice of counsel. All right, understood. Um, all right, and then 90 days after the vacancy, the council appoints uh, If, if like there's no election, it, 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 right, if the if something goes wrong with the election or if they put, nobody files a sufficient enough amount of signatures, then uh, it the duty would fall to you. All right. Councilor Atwater. Uh, you mentioned some time ago that there was a legislative action where the, the town council appointed the Groton Housing Authority, and then they became autonomous? Yeah, yes, is, it must have been. Is there any, at any time, can we vote to, to do away with the Housing Authority? I mean, do we have any? I any don't kind? know. Uh, there's no, nothing expressly in the statute. I'd have to look at that and get back to you. Um, I, I, I don't know if you, it would be a complicated dissolution. I, yeah, I understand, but it just seems strange that we would be, have the power to enact, but not to, to then undo. So. You have the wisdom of the legislature, right? <laughs> and I believe they're funded by the state. Uh, the housing authority? Right. It's probably funded by the state and funded by tenant uh, payments. By state and tenant payments. Um, if there were malfeasance that occurred by employees, not the authority, by employees, is the town liable for any problems? No. no. Okay. 
despite the fact that we appoint the authority who hires the employees? You're not in control of those employees at all. Okay. The authority, the fact that the authority has the exclusive responsibility for it insulates you from that kind of liability. Okay. Are there any? Okay, Councilor Heed. Um, and then the members, the five member board, uh, one is tenant commissioner, the other four um, are just members at large. Citizens at large, yeah. Citizens at large, um, all from Groton. Um, and they, I imagine, serve a two or three year term after which the council would then consider reappointing or changing them, is that right? It's a five year term, it rotates, and I think uh, the way uh, every year one position comes up. Right, okay. Uh, that's for consistency. Any other questions? Um, we have um, a resolution to go into executive session if any of you wanted to discuss the details about some of the correspondence we've been receiving and about the gentleman who came before us and spoke. And under the, under the basis of uh, Mr. Cody prepared a legal opinion to discuss. Ah, so then we probably should. So um, are there any other questions that you would like it to be public at this point? Okay, so Councilor Heed, please. I hereby move that the members of the town council, along with town manager John Burt, assistant town manager Bob Sagami, and attorney Rich Cody, go into executive session pursuant to general statute section 1 206 E for the purpose of discussing a matter which would result in the disclosure of public records or the information contained therein, describes that being an attorney client communication involving responsibilities of the council towards the Groton Housing Authority. I so move. Second. Moved by Heed, seconded by Parker. All those in favor of going into executive session as per uh, the resolution say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? We are at eight counselors and it was unanimous. So we are in executive session as of 648. Thank you, we're out of executive session. It is now 710. And we are on item 5B, 2019-397, Division of Statewide Emergency Telecommunications Capital Expense Grant. This is on page 12. Councilor Franco. Make a motion to recommend a resolution approving Town Manager John Bird to execute all grant documents and accept grant funding from the Division of Statewide Emergency Telecommunications, DSET, in the amount of $20,139. I so move. Second. Moved by Franco and seconded by Schmidt. And we have the chief this evening. Would you like to introduce yourself and your peer to the public, please? Sure. <laughs> uh, is this on? Uh, good evening. Uh, chief L.J. Fazaro, and with me tonight is uh, Captain Sonagra, Steve Sonagra from the police department. Uh, Steve currently oversees the dispatch center as part of our uh, functions in the, in the department. And, um, a couple of months ago, we ended up having a meeting with representatives from the uh, statewide division of emergency telecommunications. Uh, they're the folks that run the 911 systems. We've been working closely with some of their representatives on our radio system as well. During the course of that meeting, uh, uh, became known to us that there were some grant monies available that could help us with some of the projects we have ongoing. Um, Captain Sonagra did put together a, a grant application package, and we learned that we would be uh, eligible for uh, roughly $20,000 in. Um, uh, capital improvement um, funds. You want to expound upon that? Yeah, it's uh, it's based on the fact that we have a regional uh, dispatch center, and it's it's based on that and population as to how much money we get as a subsidy annually from the state, and then we're eligible to get an additional twelve and a half percent on top of that for capital improvement projects. So what we've uh, applied for is that twelve and a half percent to be put toward our new CAT RMS system that is currently being funded by a capital improvement project funding, but this would offset some of that cost. So um, we're <coughs> anticipating that there would be extra money for that CIP that would get returned to the general fund at some point when this project is done. That's great. So this is um, a system where the officers in the cars can enter the data once and they don't have to come back to the police station and redo it, correct? It, it's, it's, um, for, for many years, we've had a couple of uh, systems in the department. We had a CAD system, which is computer-aided dispatch. We get the records management. Uh, we are currently looking at some um, enhancements to some of our infrastructure that will allow officers to better enter data out in the field, but also get data from uh, the dispatch center itself. It also works uh, with, uh, with the fire service that we support as well. 
Uh, they've been part of the project from the beginning as we've looked at what the best option was for us. Uh, we have made a decision as to a car, uh, CAD RMS system, and it's a system from Connecticut uh, called NextGen, so that's, that's what we've uh, moved forward with the purchase on. And this is, um, this is a great opportunity for us to leverage some state funds against town funds. Uh, it, it, it's essentially a matching grant, there, but we don't have to put up any money because we're already paying for the system itself. Excellent. Other questions from the council? Councilor Zapari. Uh, frankly, uh, everybody's going to say I'm in a fog, but I, I don't remember the CIP specifically. How much was uh, appropriated in that CIP? Uh, this was two, it wasn't this fiscal year, it was the year before. Well, the year it before. was, uh, I believe it was 320,000 roughly. It was an FY uh, yeah. 18 project. And it was, that wasn't the UPS system? That no, was. no. It was separate. It was a separate system. So we're going to get 21, uh, what is it, 21,000, 20,139 dollars, yeah. Got the wrong glasses to look at that. Um, and that's what we're, we're, we're deciding at this point. That's what we're eligible for, so that's the maximum amount we could get, it, it, and uh, that's what we've been awarded. Uh, should the council choose to take advantage of it, that's what we've received. See, we don't want any money from someplace else. I'm sorry? We don't want any money that doesn't come from the town of taxpayers. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a good problem we've got tonight. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we will vote on 2019-397, Division of Statewide Emergency Telecommunications Capital Expense Grant. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> so moved unanimously, and we are at eight counselors. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. We are on to 2019-398 Pfizer Grant Music Therapy Program. Councilor Heed, this is on page 14, please. Motion, I'll make a motion to recommend a resolution to authorize the town manager or his designee to accept and execute grant funding in the amount of $2,500 from, from Pfizer Inc. I so move. Second. Second. Oh, three of you at once. Moved by Heed, <laughs> seconded by Zaperi. Second by everybody. By everybody, yes. Good evening. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Hi. I am Mary Jo Riley. I am the Senior Center Supervisor, and we have the opportunity to start a music therapy program at the Senior Center. Um, a lot of research has been done on music therapy, and it shows that it helps improve memory, decrease depression, and help healing. So we'd like to add that to part of our resume of programs at the Center. Is there an, a match with this or? Nope, straight out $2,500 grant. Wonderful. Councilor Zapari? Um, what would involve, it involve in terms of personnel time? Um, it's going to be included in part of the current programming. We have a program called Discover Connections for people with memory loss or socialization issues. So it's going to be added to that program. We also have some current staff that are able to work on adding it to some of the other programs we currently do. So there'll be no additional staff? No. And no additional hours for the current no. staff? Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you for pursuing this. Um, I know music does wonders for people in that situation. So. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of 2019-398 Pfizer grant, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Riley is here with us for the next item, which is 2019-385 Preventing Financial Exploitation of Older Adults Grant Program on page 19. Councilor Atwater. Uh, Madam Mayor, may I just say that I've got a text from my wife that our fire alarm is going off in our house. Do you need to excuse yourself? No, I, I th we had this problem last night, and I think it's just something. Oh, my goodness. And so she's saying that it's okay at the moment, but I just want to know if I look distracted. Do you want, do you uh, want us to come back to you? No, I'll, I'll go, go ahead. But I just I, I was looking at my text, and I want people to think I was being okay. disrespectful or whatever. So well, I hope everything's uh, fine. And if I have to get up, I'll, I'll That's leave. That's fine. Okay. Thank you for Thank notifying you. us. Uh, I'd like to recommend a motion or resolution to authorize the town manager or his designee to apply for and execute grant funding in the amount of $10,000 from the National Council on Aging. 
second. Moved by Atwater um, and seconded moved. by Parker. <coughs> Would you like to tell us about this, please? This grant is only awarded to nationally accredited senior centers, and they only awarded four in the United States. We are going to utilize it for the National Council on Aging Financial Education Program and add some of our own spin onto it by including some suggestions from our community police officers and from some of the banks that we work with to try and help educate people on how to keep their information safe. Um, this program um, does include money for providing stipends and for staff time. And they will also provide all the educational materials for this program through NCOA. So I noticed that it said um, you're gonna be hosting two courses to educate seniors. I was wondering if you would consider videotaping those for wider distribution? That was part of what we wanna do. We wanna right. work with the librarian um, to tape the class. We would start with what we call a class zero where you don't have to register. It's going to be a panel discussion to try to get people interested in the program. And we'd also plan on taping that. That's great. Are there any other questions or comments? Councilor Heath. Is this only intended for uh, seniors or is it support family members also? Um, this is meant because it comes from the National Council on Aging for seniors. But um, if we have space, we may open it up to anyone. It really does depend on how many people register for the program. And they just register right on the website? They can register through the website or at the senior center, yes. Councilor Schmidt, did you have a question for Ms. Yes, Ryan? I just wanted to clarify that there is no matching grant required. No. Anyone else have questions for Ms. Riley? Councilor Zafer. I just wanted to comment. Thank you for the splendid work you've done in, in uncovering these sources and being able to offer new services to people of the town. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Seeing no further discussion, we will vote on 2019-385, Preventing Financial Exploitation of Older Adults Grant Program. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? abstentions so moved unanimously thank you very much okay uh, the next item is 2019 391 on page 24 this requires no motion we're looking for consensus only and mr schneider is with us would you like to introduce yourself to the public please yes my name is gary schneider director of public works uh the first slot that we have there's two slots that i'm uh I'm here before the council uh, with at the water pollution control facility. The first slot is a WPCF technician. It's the only one we have down there. Uh, main, the main duties are uh, one is to do call before you digs, uh, which is the marking of our utilities out on the road. We are required by law uh, to mark our utilities uh, that we have in the streets in the public rights of way. If we don't do it, uh, there's usually there's an emergency call, which we must respond to within so many hours, it would be an hour, hour and a half. Or if it's a regular call, you have three days, but we mark out our utilities. If we don't mark them out and a contractor hits our utilities, it, the, the, uh, the cost of repair is on us, on the town. If we mark out our utilities and the contractor still hits them, then the cost for repair is on the contractor. The slot also does what we call a defog program, fats, oils, and greases. It goes throughout town and monitors the grease traps throughout our restaurants and other food prep places. Uh, we are seeing a spike in the Mystic area. A lot of good restaurants down there, a lot of population eating down there, a lot of people coming in. We are seeing a larger uh, influx of grease and oils, fats, oils, and greases into our system. Once we get a clog down there, we have to respond and to clean it out. It is better to catch that issue at the source, which, is, which are at the grease traps, which are either inside the restaurants or outside in, in large vaults. Uh, this, this slot also does some technical work. We have some valve replacements, contractors. We do contract out some of our work down there, so this person is uh, like our construction inspector monitoring the uh, contractors that we have down there doing work. Uh, the, uh, the position was vacant or was vacated about in April. 
uh, the person left for the West Coast uh, to uh, uh, try his, his hand out on, on, on the West Coast. So this is a critical position uh, for the division, and uh, uh, we hope to fill it as soon as we can, if the council concurs. Does anyone have questions about the position or the filling of this vacancy? Mr. Burt? Is that funded entirely out of the water pollution? Correct. Both positions are 100% funded from use sewer use fees. Do I see a hand? Councilor Speaker? It's, uh, on, the, on the very last paragraph, in fact, the very last comment, it says the department requests the town council approve the backfiling of the vacated position. What do you mean by backfiling? Uh, that's backfilling. Uh, if, if, oh, okay. if there's an internal candidate, we okay. offer this in-house okay. first. If there's an internal candidate, then there's another position open. Okay. Uh, what I'm requesting is that um, uh, that, that uh, be not an automatic, but the council concurs that, that if it's filled by an in-house position, I don't have to come back here. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? So then, <laughs> so then, um, by consensus, we agree that this position should be filled. Correct? Yes. Okay. Very good. So we are on to the next item. Again, um, this is 2019 394 Assistant Director of Public Works Operations WPCF, and this is again seeking consensus. Mr. Schneider. Correct. Uh, this is one of my. Division heads. Uh, uh, he has left the employment of the town of Groton for a career development in another town. Uh, the, the, the position is uh, uh, critical because it, it oversees, manages, uh, and uh, oversees the operation of our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, other than just the leadership of that division with its 19 employees and it, its other work, it also staffs the Water Pollution Control Authority. It does review, re review all the items that we need to go too deep with, which is our permits, does arrange tours and meetings uh, held at the WPC, at, at the WPCF, at the, at the treatment facility itself. And of course, it fields public and, con and consumer inquiries and disseminates information. It also does sewer assess benefit assessments. Even though we're not installing new sewers in a town, we have, through the 80s and 90s, when we installed sewers, it was a benefit assessment. And where this comes into play is that if, more or less as an example, if you had a, a 10 acres of land on a sewer and only one acre was developed, one acre would, would become due. You have to pay a sewer assessment on that one acre, but nine acres would be deferred. So what we do is periodically, maybe one or two a month now, they're picking up as we take a look at what the deferment was and if a person would only, of the 10 acres, they had one developed, if they developed two more, then we have to take and recalculate that number. So what we do is we sit there and we watch the accounts to ensure that the, uh, the uh, money's coming back into the town for those deferred assessments. This, this position also mediates uh, inquiries to sewer billing issues that we have. Some of them could be as simple as I have, I'm being billed for two units and I only have one by a building permit. And so we look at that or the other way around is I'm, I'm going from two building units to an apartment and I have a water meter. So it works through all of those issues with, with our customers to make sure that we're billed properly. Uh, the uh, slot uh, has a, about a $6 million budget. We're into a capital improvement program of one to $3 million a year. So this person does operate that division and again this is one position that's fully funded by the sewer sewer use and that includes the salary and the benefits 100 percent funded other questions councillor he do these positions include those um, step increases uh this this one here is a non-union position so it does not so it's it's based on whatever uh we we have in the budget book and what's uh, what's been approved by the council for uh, you know, salary increases. So this does not have any step increases. Do you have anyone on the horizon from within the department? Uh, I believe not. Uh, what we're looking for is, is, is a technical person. We have several people down at the wastewater treatment plant. One's my maintenance supervisor down there, a very talented person. Uh, he wants to stay in maintenance. And we have our class four operator. He wants to stay in operations. He likes working with the personnel to get the process going not working on the administrative side. Uh, so uh, he had, although he could apply, uh, I don't think he will. Uh, in fact, he's 
making close to or more than what this position will offer uh, right there now. Are there any other questions or concerns in filling this position? Seeing none, it looks like you have consensus to go ahead and fill the position. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. Okay, thank you. Yes. Mr. Hines on his way should be here in the next couple of minutes for the next item. Okay. Do we want to go ahead and um, let Mr. Bront come up and just introduce it? Okay, so I think we are on 2019-178 Groton Heights Redevelopment Thayer Mahan Letter of Intent on page 33. And Councilor Schmidt, please. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. I wholeheartedly make a motion to recommend a resolution to approve the letter of intent from Thayer Mahan. Second. Second. Third. Moved by Schmidt, seconded by Atwater. <laughs> okay, Mr. Bronk, would you like to introduce yourself and then you could give us the background? Sure. Thank you. Age Bronk, Economic and Community Development Manager. I do anticipate Rich Hine being here any minute. Um, he's probably parking the vehicle in the car in the uh, lot at the moment. Um, I think pertaining to this item, We've had several briefings in the past dealing with the redevelopment of the Groton Heights Elementary School. <clears throat> We've had um, certainly some executive session meetings. We've had public meetings. Most recently, Thayer Mahan presented to the city of Groton as well, um, similar presentation as was provided to the town council. We've had presentations to the neighborhood at the Bill Memorial Library. Um, and there's been, uh, I think, overall significant public release of, uh, of the project. <clears throat> and going through that process has really developed an understanding, I think, by most people regarding the project, and there's been um, a lot of public support. Um, but moving forward, there's a need to formalize the project and agreements between the property owner being the town and Thayer Mahan regarding the project. <clears throat> so what we've envisioned and something that was desired by Thayer Mahan was to use a letter of intent to somewhat jumpstart this agreement. The letter of intent is provided uh, before you. It's not that long. It is a, it is a document that's been reviewed by their legal staff and, and also um, our legal staff and uh, it, it's some the terms within are certainly um, approved by all no. please come up good evening mr. Hine. Hi. thank you for coming out Thanks. mr. Bronk was just telling us about what the purpose of a letter of intent was oh, okay Hi. Um, <laughs> You want to introduce yourself? Richard Hine, Thayer Mahan. Thank okay. you. Uh, I was just mentioning about the public meetings and also uh, in formalizing the project, we had agreed that a letter of intent is the, the best next in, interim measure to advance the project. The letter of intent has been reviewed by their staff, our staff, our attorney. Uh, it's not that long, but what it does do is it concisely encapsulates the terms and conditions of the redevelopment project. As we've been saying many times, this is not just a real estate transaction, otherwise we would have just sold the property. We're really interested to make sure that we're developing a partnership, and the terms and conditions within are more than simply the financial offering, but it describes the use, the experience of the team, what's going to transpire uh, over a certain period of time. Um, so, the letter of intent will come first, and then later we'll actually have a purchase and sale agreement. Uh, our goal is to probably have the, uh, the property transferring to, uh, to the developer later on this year, likely early fall, thereabouts. Um, also, the letter of intent, it provides some level of surety to the developer so that they can actually begin doing something. We've, talked about the roof and how it's leaking. They would really want to move forward in, in taking some action, and I think, uh, assuming this is approved, this would provide them 
basically the support to say, we have this partnership and we're going to advance. Good. Did you want to add anything, Mr. Mr. No, I think Paige summed it up well. We're, um, you know, I'll just reiterate that we're fully committed and excited to work with the town and the city. We did a public session at the city um, with their mayor and board about two weeks ago. That went, that went well. Um, you know, the, the MOU, if executed, um, allows us to, to um, take some more positive steps in terms of developing um, plans and specs and um, getting estimates for things like um, asbestos and mold remediation, et cetera. So it allows us to, you know, with some degree of certainty or, um, you know, move the ball along and allows our board some level of confidence that we're moving forward. Great. Uh, does anyone need to ask a question or did you want to say something? No, uh, just uh, good job to our economic development staff and appreciative of uh, Rich and uh, Thayer Mahan and thought everything went really well. Councilor Zapari and then Franco. We've heard about this before and we were enthusiastic about it. I'm just sorry that you guys had to take the evening off to come in and tell us about it again. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think this is a great thing for Groton and, uh, and I'd, I'd like to see it go forward. Councilor Franco. So I'm not very familiar with an LOI. So from what I'm gathering from what you've just explained, it's from now until the actual purchase is finalized. Is that basically what this is in play when this is in play? I, I think uh, in the simplest way to explain it, this is an interim mechanism that allows the project to officially launch so that they can move forward with their financing entities. They can start taking some immediate action and start um, really doing some tangible items with the project. So this will be in effect for a short period of time. And there are provisions within this letter of intent that set the stage for the purchase and sale agreement. So this is somewhat of a precursor to that purchase and sale agreement. And then we, we tee up the closing. Okay, because I did notice that it's only in effect for 150 days, and that can be renegotiated if things aren't finalized in 150 days? They, they can be. Um, I think we're fairly conservative with many of our terms within the document. Worst case scenario would be that you're, you're too close on your time frames and, and someone is basically um, not complying with the provisions within the document, but I think it's it's both of our intent to actually advance this as quickly as possible. Okay, um, I'm looking at the section 2.10. I'm asking these questions just so I can understand some of these because I'm not sure what they mean. On the second sentence, it says, if the property is purchased by the permitted assignee of the Thayer Mahan, rather than Thayer Mahan itself, Thayer Mahan shall execute a triple net lease, which shall be subject to the town's and Thayer Mahan's review in all respects. What exactly what? does that mean? Oh, two. The second sentence. I'm not sure about what the lease is about, would be about. Can, can I answer that? Sure. Oh, I didn't know if it was addressed to Paige or not. Anybody? <laughs> um, one of the financing scenarios that we um, are discussing is using what's called um, tax exempt bond financing. And if that, if that scenario is how we do it as opposed to a traditional construction perm loan, we would assign title to the, the bond company. So they would technically take title. And what this says is you can't just assign it to, you know, it's, it's a permitted assignee. And then you would, you Thayer Mahan would sign a 30 year lease with them saying you're going to be there and you're going to operate consistent with the, with the MOU. Okay. Um, same paragraph, it says the town reserves the right to require a title reverter clause in any deed in the event that Thayer Mahan or its permitted assignee fails to perform the project after acquisition of title to the property. The title reverter clause would be ex extinguished after Thayer Mahan receives all prerequisite project approvals and a building permit for construction of the project. So you're 
what this is saying to me, at least, how I understand it, is the title reverter would stop as soon as basically they got their permit and all their approvals. Yes, that's correct. So as soon as the purchase and they got those approvals. So even if they got a permit and then they stall right after that, and, and then what? Well, that was, that's kind of a sensitive issue in that, you know, the town is looking to protect your interests against me doing something nefarious or not building or doing something mm -hmm. outside the, um, what we planned, but it, a title reverter clause would prevent me from getting financing if it doesn't have a termination date because no loan company is going to loan me money to build on a piece of property that the town could take back, so to speak. So um, at the point where we have a building permit, we've expended hundreds of thousands of dollars in plans and, um, and, and we thought between the, the solicitor for the town and myself and our attorney that that was at that point we're committed and going you know okay. it would make sense for us to spend hundreds of thousands be of invested. dollars to stop you'll be invested i understand that was actually a compromise i, I think um many developers don't want any restrictions whatsoever mm -hmm. me included but uh, yeah. they, they would simply want the property and the flexibility to do what they need to do we often start with the provision uh, or the belief that we want to revert because we want to ensure that the proposal we've accepted is the one that will actually get built. So, as Rich mentioned, this is somewhere in between. There's an assumption that you've gone so far into the project, he's lined up his financing, his contractors, you've gone through the zoning approvals, you're in it. There's a high likelihood that this is actually going to happen when okay. you get the building permit. Right. You'll be happy to know your attorney proposed an indefinite reverter till you know the end of the world, and <laughs> we proposed no reverter. So this All is right. where we compromised in between. Okay, thank you. Also, um, I see that there's about the brownfield money, the DECD money, and then on 3.5, it goes on to say approve and implement the proposed infrastructure assistance funding up to $100,000 as necessary to reduce the overall cost of redevelopment to be reimbursed based on the value once infrastructure improvements are completed in connection with the project. Can you tell me what that funding is? Sure. Um, we've come before you several times in the past and dealt with the economic assistance fund. And a key formula that we often use is not to exceed two times the post-improvement annual taxes. Mm -hmm. um, we used the same formula in coming up with 100,000 approximately, we, we projected approximately the post-improvement annual taxes will be about $50,000. Mm -hmm. um, the proposal provided by Thayer Mahan had requested use of that fund to assist with their on-site infrastructure. Uh, what we did, instead of going through the formal application process, we applied the standard formula, we incorporated it into the LOI, it'll be a part of the overall transaction. Um, we also propose that that $100,000 be paid um, on a reimbursement basis after the closing and after the work is done. So basically, the, the purchase price is uh, $255,200. We will, in essence, reimburse Thayer Mahan from that 255000 $255, money they have paid to us once they demonstrate the infrastructure improvements have been done. Yeah, and I think your question was two parts. So the, the infrastructure assistance is for things like water, sewer, sidewalks, um, site work and infrastructure. The Brownfield grant is a separate um, Right, I that one was state, separate. State I, grant. Right. And then my final question was section five. It's five point one and I don't I completely don't even understand any of this. So you want to explain what conditions president are? Stage, these things would have to be 
satisfied. Somewhat like, of a due diligence. Yeah. Like review and approve materials. Oh. Completion of satisfactory due diligence searches and examinations. Yeah, the materials refers to the due diligence materials. Um, and it's kind of a conditions precedent for both sides. You know, I have to get our final board approval. Um, we have to get through the city um, permitting uh, process for zoning, planning, and, and building permits. Um, and then satisfaction towns undertaken in Article 3. I guess that's all the things we, um, the town, I'll say, uh, obligations or, or things that were set forth in paragraph 3. Okay, thank you. Councilor Heath. Um, regarding the, the property swaps, are there things that we'll have to do between now and before the, the time of the sale uh, to get that ready um, or um, anything that will happen? Will it all just happen at the time of sale? Or With do we have the Bill Memorial that? Library? Correct. Well, we have, there's the right of way for the road as well. Paper Street. Mm -hmm. That actually, uh, the Bill Memorial Library land swap is a separate transaction. Um, that would be handled by Thayer Mahan and the library. And the town is involved in the, um, the street abandonment. In fact, when we met with your yeah. council, um, he was already doing title research on, um, you know, whether it's permitted to, to abandon that street. Um, and whether or not to abandon, I'll call it the Thayer Mahan section of the street, or the Bill Memorial Library section of the street, or both. Mm -hmm. So, um, he, you know, I, I think he's researching it. But uh, I've been speaking with him weekly on that, and um, yeah, he, he's just trying to find the best path to actually make that happen. But um, we clearly have the authority as the town to abandon Library Street and basically commit it to the development. Right. Who is he? Uh, Eric Callahan, sorry. Oh, right, okay. Are there other questions? Okay. Seeing none, we'll vote on 2019-178 Groton Heights Redevelopment there Mahan Letter of Intent. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Abstentions? So move you now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. That's my only agenda item. Very yeah. good, thank you. Nice. You too. Good night. Good night. I don't believe we have any review of agenda items. I have one item under other business that I wanted to address, um, and it's something that we had inquired, or I had inquired about earlier, um, and um, <coughs> the status of the um, use of Roundup, Mr. Burt. Um, and I know Mr. Schneider was looking into that. Has yeah. there been any progress on that? Well, he's meeting tomorrow, I think it is, with uh, is it Waterford, mm -hmm. and he's polling other towns to see what they do. He's got some preliminary, if we do switch over to the other products, a preliminary cost, we'll probably need to do a budget amendment around $35,000 to switch products. Um, but I should know more, hopefully by the end of this week, early next week, otherwise. I'll know about Waterford this week, but I'm not sure how long it'll take to poll with the others. Okay. Plus, if, and, and is that also for the golf course, or is that, that just for the town? The, the, my understanding from Mark Berry is they're already switching to the other product. They don't use them a whole lot of product, anyhow. Great. Okay. okay. Councilor Franco. This is the first time hearing of this. I don't know what this is about. Uh, I was requested to look at, apparently Waterford, did it start with an article, Waterford was looking at abandoning the use of Roundup, is that where it started So from? it started with um, the, the finding that Roundup causes cancer. And we inquired, or I had inquired, someone else had inquired um, as to whether the town of Groton was using Roundup and if there was a potential to switch over to another product. So Gary, Gary's putting that information together to present to the council. For no. town purposes or for, for or roadway, for along the roads? For Parks town, and rec. town use was my intent. Parks and Rec uh, don't use a whole lot of Roundup anyway, so they're just switching over. They're not, they won't become, there's a few gallons they use a year. I see. Um, but it's a significant amount with the, uh, we don't do it in-house right now for Roundup. We contract it out. Well, you can't get a contractor to do this other product. We'd have to do it by hand. Um, that's why it's more costly. Um, but Gary's putting those numbers together. And there were some, we had heard Waterford might be backing out of uh, 
switching over. So you just want to gather information, it'll come before the council and present it to you. And once we have all the info, Councilor Baumgartner. And if I'm, I'm not mistaken, I think the Black Point um, Association and Neighborhood Association in Niantic recently banned uh, Roundup, though obviously it's not a municipality. So um, I think Waterford has been exploring it, but I wasn't sure if any other municipality outside of Waterford had, had done that. And um, even like, a, um, like at a one Rhode Island, too. Um, I'm sorry. Um, even uh, amongst um, some of our surrounding communities in Rhode Island, especially because although they're, um, you know, across, just across the border, um, they're still our neighbors to an extent. So There's a lot of information out there. I forwarded some of it to Mr. Burt to share with Mr. Schneider. Um, there's um, organizations of municipalities that are working on the issue of using um, safer chemicals to maintain the municipality. Um, there are um, organizations or municipalities out there that have already made the switch over, um, some within Connecticut um, and surrounding states as well. So there's a lot of, there's a wealth of information out there. Um, so we wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel. We could just go forward and look at what other towns are doing and see if any of it would work for us. And then if not, then we reinvent the wheel. Um, yeah. but <laughs> break it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Anybody else have other business that they wanted to bring before the council? Councilor Schmidt. Well, I just wanted to say that I read in the, uh, the weekly status report about the 16 different locations that uh, children can go to to have free breakfast and lunch. I'm sure they have to apply at some point, but I think uh, no. it's a, a wonderful opportunity that we're giving people to be able to be fed, and uh, I want to commend the, uh, the school for doing this. That's excellent. There's information on the town website, uh, school website as well. It's great. Um, Councilor Heed, and then I'll mention one other thing. Uh, we appoint uh, as a council to ad hoc boards and commissions. Um, we did a whole bunch of appointments back in April of last year, um, or at least it was finally voted on in April of last year. Um, but one of them, Ledge Light Health District, um, Board of Directors, uh, Jackie Massa previously was serving on it. Uh, so we're going to need a, it, according to Steve Mansfield, uh, we typically would appoint another town councilor. Um, so we'll need to get a volunteer from. Betsy did follow up though, it's not required. That's often been the case in the past, but it's not a requirement. Gotcha, long. okay. So either a town council or we just appoint somebody else. So I will be looking for a volunteer or a suggestion. It uh, meets the um, second Thursday of the month at 5.30. So if you're interested, let Councilor Heath know, um, and it could go through the personnel appointments committee. Correct. Um, one other item, just also in the weekly status report, Human Services is collecting gently used clothing. Um, so if any of you out there are shutting down the kids' school clothes for the, for the spring and summer, and you have things that they've outgrown, um, you can drop them off at the Human Services building, and then in the fall there will be an event where the public can go in and um, people that are in need can um, have use of the clothing. So that's available in Human Services or at the Human Services building if you need to drop things off. Thank you. Anything else under other business? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Moved by Parker, seconded by Baumgartner. All those in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved unanimously. We are adjourned at 752.